Denmark is sending Riley to Eurovision 2023 in Liverpool with Breaking My Heart. But do we Riley like this one? Let's review Eurovision. Denmark has had a bit of a tricky few years at Eurovision. They haven't qualified since 2019. They should have qualified in 2021, though. Absolutely robbed with that disco bop. Um, disco was it 80s yeah 80s that was funny because i saw it in our reviews we didn't like it and then we saw it live and we were like oh my god this is the best thing i've ever seen yeah i loved it it's one of my favorite danish entries um yeah absolutely love it so this year they're sending their hopes on the back of riley now somehow Riley is 25. he's older than me and that honestly is one of the most depressing things i've ever read I don't, I, I, I genuinely, my brain cannot compute that. Somehow he's 25, he looks about 12. Um, let's have a listen to his song. All right, that was a little bit of breaking my heart. Has it broken your heart though, Emily? It's not broken my heart. It's a very nice entry. It's very TikTok. It's very Gen Z. It's very bubblegum pop. It's very radio friendly. My issue with it is, is that it doesn't feel like it, it wouldn't be out of place at junior Eurovision. It feels kind of a bit childish. And that's kind of, one of my concerns with it but I mean it's fun they have the opportunity to do something kind of very fun with the staging although you know if he's 25 maybe he won't be able to keep up with some really wild staging (laughs) because it's so bizarre how is he 25 it's insane I don't know how he's 25 I don't know I would have said he was like 17 yeah generally it actually hurts my soul that he's older than me like yeah. I, I honestly, I take it as a personal attack. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's it's very fun. It is. It's one of those ones where I think it'll be a bit like Snap, where it kind of really takes off on TikTok after the contest, and it'll be kind of very, you know, essentially it'll go down really well. <laughs> Seventeen-year-old girls probably. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to bad to say about it apart from you know kind of feels like it belongs in junior Eurovision but that's kind of what makes it stand out so yeah there we are yeah I agree with that it does feel a little bit junior Eurovision not in a bad way because there are some box at junior Eurovision there are some really really good ones um but it does feel a little bit kiddy um I, I actually I I agree with your TikTok thing I you know a month ago I'd have said this is going to be the TikTok hit of the year and it has been built as a TikTok hit plot twist though tattoo has gone viral on tiktok it's everywhere i can't sort of scroll without seeing it so i think actually that may end up being with the quite surprised tiktok hit of the year i mean it is a fucking brilliant song it deserves all the plaudits it gets but i would have this this to me on paper is more of a tiktok song so i think this might be the snap of the year it might not who knows um but i think it's it's slick it's it, it maybe the first listen I was a bit hmm. Um, but after a few listens, I got it. I think the the live vocal, I think he can sing. I do think he can sing, but some of the performances have been a little bit pitchy. And I think that's part of the problem. When you have a song that is such a high pitch for so much of it, it, it is risky. Um, and I, I kind of think it's if they'd not done that, it would have been a bit more of an obvious sell. Um, and it would have been a bit hard, a bit easier for him to actually hit the notes consistently. So I think it's it, it it is a risky one. If he hits the notes, I think it'll go through. If it if it doesn't, it's a tricky one. But I think it's slick. It's it's well produced. It's decent enough writing. Um, and it but it's it's clearly quite mass market. And I think it, it's quite unfair the amount of criticism that he's been getting. Um, quite it's some really quite abusive stuff actually. Some really quite unpleasant things. 
um, have been written that I think are just unjustified. I think it's people sort of trolling for the sake of it, accusing him of being an industry plant and all that. I don't really give a shit. You know, it's what you... He won the Nationals final fair and square. Fair enough. I think it's a solid enough song. It's among the better Danish entries, I think I'll say as well. Um, but interestingly enough, I, I started listening to some of his back catalogue um, once he was picked to do this. And I think this is not even his strongest song. Often artists peak with their Eurovision song and send the best one. But his other stuff is pretty good as well. The annoying thing is a lot of his stuff samples other music. So his best one, Let It Ring, samples the Apple ringtone. It was apparently, according to his Spotify, the first time Apple has ever allowed its ringtone to be used in a song, which is quite a fun fact. Um, but that is really catchy. It's really, really catchy. But obviously you can't sample the Eurovision because of the sort of plagiarism rules. So it, he almost strikes me as the type of Gen Z artist that uses quite a lot of sampling, but isn't made for Eurovision in that regard. And I feel like this is sort of the best he could have done with the the rules that he has to try and follow, if that makes sense. So I think by and large, quite strong. I enjoy listening to it. So it's opening the second semi-final. It's going just before Armenia. A bit of an interesting choice to open. It's not one of the ones I'd have had opening the show. Um, but do we think it's going to qualify? And where would we put it out of 10, Emily? Yeah, I, I, I'm I, optimistic that this will end Denmark's kind of lack of qualification streak. Um, would it have got out of the first semi-final? Yeah, to be fair. I mean, it's televote. So I think it, I think this is way more televote friendly than it is jury friendly. So yeah, I think it, it should go through. Um, for me personally, it's a seven out of 10. Oh, there's been a lot of sevens recently, hasn't there? Seven licious. Seven, seven central licious. over here. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's, yeah, don't mind it. Mm. Uh, I like that 7.5 for me. Um, I do, yeah, I, I, I like it. I think it should go through, but there's obviously the big question about the live vocal. Um, if it's as pitchy as it has been in some clips that I've seen, I'm not sure it will go through. If he nails it, yeah, I think it should go through. But I, I it's the type of song that I think the juries might murder. Actually, maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. I don't know. It's a tricky one. I don't think it'll do brilliantly in the final if it makes it there. It'll 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 get Denmark back into the final, and that's half the challenge with Denmark because they don't seem to have much of an easy route into the final anymore. But yeah, I I like it. It's competent enough. I think it's slick, and I I, I hope to see him on Saturday. Yeah. No, definitely. I don't think it'll do too well in the final, but as long as it gets there, that's half the battle done. Um, but that's it from this episode. Let us know whether you agree or disagree with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell so you can get notified every time we upload new content. We're also on Instagram and we're on wherever you get your podcasts. Just type in Review Vision. We'll be there. Um, but that's it from this episode. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>